In this video, we'll be taking apart the Unihertz Jelly Max, a 5 inch 5G smartphone. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a look at that. On the bottom there are two T5 or Torx 5 screws which need to be removed. Now a plastic pry tool needs to be placed in between the back housing and the frame of the screen and ran along the edges to pop off the catches. Here's a look at the back plastic cover. The flex cable for the fingerprint sensor is located over here. The camera lens cover is held on with adhesive, so to replace that just apply some heat and pry it off. The plastic overlay resembling circuitry can be peeled off. Now 12 T5 or Torx 5 screws need to be removed. On the bottom plastic cover there are numerous antenna lines drawn which are the light grey color lines. Also the contacts for the flex cable for the NFC antenna are located on the bottom. Here's a look at the other side. The battery cable cannot be disconnected from the main board. Once the NFC antenna has been peeled off from the battery, the flex cable for the dual LED flash, as well as the contacts for the fingerprint scanner can be disconnected from the main board. There are additional antenna lines drawn on this top plastic cover, again which are the light grey color lines. The loudspeaker is located here, these are the dual LED flash, and these are the contacts which lead to the back fingerprint scanner. Here's a look at the other side. There's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. This is the 4080 milliamp hour battery, which is basically two 2040 milliamp hour batteries put together to operate as one. Five Phillips screws need to be removed. Now the flex cables for the cameras need to be disconnected. This is the 100 megapixel camera, and next to that is the telephoto lens, neither of which have OIS or optical image stabilization. On the back of this metal plate, there's a flex cable which connects the speaker assembly to the motherboard. The flex cable for the screen can now be disconnected from the main board.
On the side of the motherboard, there's a secondary microphone on the top corner. The flex cable for the front facing camera is connected on this corner. And there's a rubber gasket over the charger port. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side. The primary microphone is located next to the charger port. There's graphite film over these shields, as well as thermal paste on these chips to help transfer heat. There's an infrared or IR blaster on the top, as well as a proximity sensor. And we see the 32 megapixel front facing camera on the corner. The charger port is soldered to the main board. And here's a better look at the RAM and processor with the thermal pads removed. Once the motherboard has been removed, we can see additional thermal pads over here, the vibrator motor, as well as a copper heat pipe top transfer heat. Also the flex cables for the buttons are located here. Those can be replaced by prying them off. The earpiece speaker is also held down with some adhesive, so to replace that, again just apply some heat and gently pry it off. As for the screen, if you need to replace that and there is an available part, at this point you'd heat up the front where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive and reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble the phone. But I would assume if there are any screen replacements for this phone, they would come with the midframe pre-attached. For the repairability score on this phone I give it an 8 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.